start the recording. Uh, it's all right. We're making making moves here. Uh, Forty six. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on uh, to new business. Um, we have a uh, a few representatives from Department of Ecology, uh, Water Resources here on the, the line with us. Uh, we asked them to, to join us today. Uh, we have some questions uh, regarding process um, with regards to the uh, recent uh, water rights transfer application um, from City of Area Heights. So uh, we thank you, uh, Jamie, Daniel, and uh, Patrick for, for joining us. So could you kind of give us a, a brief overview of, of what ecologies, um, where ecology is in, in the process of, of reviewing this application right now? Certainly. This is Dan Tollison with Ecology, and I am the uh, permitting unit supervisor there, and I've actually been working on this one because it has a number of issues. Um, I'll just give you a quick rundown of kind of where we came from and where we are, and then what the process is going through the future. And feel free to stop me if you need to, or if not, I'll give you time for questions when I'm done here. Thank you. All righty. So, oh uh, gosh, shortly after they discovered all the pollution problems out there in Airway Heights around the PFOS back in, what is that, 17? They approached the city of Airway Heights approached us, try to figure out ideas of how to solve their issues. Um, we met with them a number of times over the years. Finally, a plan was sort of um, set up, and the idea was is to use their existing water rights for mitigation, with the thought that their existing water rights eventually impact the Spokane Restroom Prairie Aquifer down towards like the seven nine mile kind of range. That's roughly where it is. Um, so <clears throat> we worked together to come up with an idea. They had a hydrogeologic analysis done. Once that was completed, which was, I think, early, the early part of this year, they filed an application in June to take a portion. So one of, one of the things I should talk about is, is they filed for a water right for a mitigated, a, a new water right, but it's a mitigated water right. So they're using their existing water rights for mitigation. Um, the HG analysis that they used basically indicated that a portion, not all of their water rights, so they have about a little over 2,000 acre feet of annual quantity. Um, of that, about 1,200 acre feet was available to have immediate, to use immediately for mitigation in the Spokane River because they've been off long enough, the impact would be there. Um, just so you know, I'm not a hydrogeologist, I rely on Patrick for that, so he can answer, answer your questions on that. So. Then from there, we had the application over the summer. We worked together. We got the, I had, they had a number of questions for them. They uh, provided me information that I needed. They did the public notice. And just so you know, our public notice is still a bit old school. It's two weeks in the newspaper. Oftentimes the way newspapers are, people don't look at them anymore, but that's unfortunately the way our statute is. So that was our public notice and that was in August. Then from there, uh, I worked on writing the report. Uh, they provided me more information. Um, I've gotten through the vast majority of the report. It's report is basically written. The last thing that I needed done was the SEPA analysis. And I believe that's where um, many people were notified that this project was going on. So the city of Airway Heights is the lead agency. So we, they, they went forward with that process. I'm basically waiting for them to get back to me with the SEPA documents so I can move forward. So that's where we're at right now. So going forward, the next steps will be as soon as I receive whatever SEPA documents they provide me, I'll finish up the last of the report, which isn't much. It's just basically take the information they provided, update it. Then the next step for us would be a final internal review, which given the timing of talking to Airway Heights, it sounds like they'll get SEPA documents to me sometime in January. So I would assume towards the end of January, early February, we will have it complete, ready to go. It will be put on Ecology's website for draft, um, basically draft report of exam, which is our report. That will go out for 30 days. That would be an excellent time if people who have interest in it to make comments. So you can make comments on the website, we can get those. 
once the 30 days is over, then I review all the comments um, and I'll address those in the ROE if they're not already addressed in the, the report. From there, um, we we do a, I, the final final report, I guess is what you want to call it. That would actually be the appealable decision that would be issued after that. That would go out by mail and has a 30 day appeal period. And anybody withstanding then could appeal that decision if they don't agree with it. Um, and that's, that's pretty much our process. So that's gonna push us, it's gonna give any, any of your groups that are interested in this, it'll give them at least two different opportunities. One that's a, 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 you can review the draft and provide comments. And then if there are significant concerns, you can actually appeal it. If you do, if it, it appeals through ecology on these types of reports, go to a pollution controls hearings board. And that's pretty much the basic steps that we've got ahead of us. Um, what I'm what I'm wondering is because there is a lot of interest in this. If we could get a collection of maybe email addresses and we could send those out a link to it when we do the the draft public note or the draft notice on the internet, because that seems like it'd be the easiest for everybody to find. Um, that's where I'm at. If you have any questions, I, I'm open to that. Yeah, we certainly can uh, provide you with um, some addresses to to keep uh, for sharing that information. Um, is, is Ecology's um, typical public notice put in the spokesman review? Yes, the original public notice was done, let's see, June, let's see, when was it? August 11th to the 18th in the spokesman review. Okay, thank you. Uh, So how does, um, I, I guess I have a question about how ecology um, kind of frames mitigation. Um, and, and so, yes, yeah, so we have like a policy that talks about various types of mitigation. This, this one, because you have an in-stream flow on the Spokane River and you have concerns for impacts, impairment, that sorts of thing, right? We would have to do in time and in kind type of mitigation. So my understanding is, is you have the, I mean, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to describe it. You kind of have two cups, you have a, ba a bucket of water up there where Airway Heights is, it leaks or drains in the direction of the Spokane River. Over time, which there's, uh, it depends on which well it was and what the, it'll, it'll hit the Spokane River. The annual quantity, which would be the amount that they used every year, that quantity that they were authorized will impact the river, is already impacting the river right now. So if they drill, construct a new well down by the, down by the river in the Spokane aquifer there, they would have in time, in kind mitigation. So the, the amount of acre footage that they originally withdrew would up there on Airway Heights would now have the same mitigation down there uh, in the aquifer. So it would be a, a direct mitigation. It wouldn't be some kind of um, I know there's there's odd odd types of ideals of mitigation, but this seems to be an in kind in time mitigation. So how, how is how would um, let, let's just say further uh, development in that that pivot channel aquifer that they're currently in um, further development as in uh, new permanent exempt wells um, that get sunk presumably uh, any time now, um, how is that mitigation, um, is that memorialized in any way um, to be certain that that water continues to uh, reach the Spokane Valley Rathbone oh. Aquifer? Gotcha, okay, so they have, I don't remember, it's a portfolio of like about a half a dozen water rights. <clears throat> They're taking two of their water, I think it's two of their water rights and half of another one. They will take those. They will. They have identified those for mitigation. When we issue this, the water right report of exam, they will relinquish those permanently. And that was that'll be no, that that is actually in the report. It actually tells you what we've done, how we've identified them. They're in good standing, and how they'll be used for mitigation for this project. They'll be relinquished. So that means permanently removed from the system. They were senior water rights to any exempt wells that would go in, you know, from today forward. Or but most of their water rights, I think, date back to like the. I think the 50s, 60s, 70s, somewhere along the line, you know, as, as they developed over the years. Um, so that mitigation, there's those water rights will be gone and the new ones will replace them essentially. 
Did I hopefully answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, growth is happening up there and it is not going to stop um, if, if current trends can continue. Uh, I guess uh, my, my main question is how, I, I know that you, what you said was they'd be permanently removed, but uh, does this turn into a, a scenario like uh, the Little Spokane River Basin where uh, new wells were uh, not allowed to be put in until a, a water bank or, of some sort was, was stood up uh, to, to mitigate that closed basin? Um, or is this just a, uh, an action that takes place uh, procedural, those rights go bye-bye and um, business as usual moving forward in that basin. So the rights go away and the little Spokane, I mean, that's, I understand that's an example of the way it was, but they do have stream flow restoration, that large bill that they passed for exactly for this issue. So you're talking about the proliferation, proliferation of exempt wells in an area so they do have they do have um, um, statute in place to try to offset that for growth. I mean, it's it, it happens everywhere. I mean, it's it's an ongoing problem everywhere. We're we're looking at the impact of you no longer use the water up on the West Plains where their Airway Heights is. It, the impact has always been to the Spokane River. Now you're moving the impact completely out of the West Plains, which actually should, in, in reality, in short term, make sure the exempt wells don't go dry and, and help them. And the impact will now then be down by the river where it eventually hit anyway. So it, it, it moves basically the impact lower in the basin. So it shouldn't cause, it won't cause impairment to in-stream flows. Um, but exempt wells is kind of its own animal. I mean, that's why, that's why, there's, that's why there's a whole stream flow, or stream flow restoration projects and they, I mean, there's a lot going into that. That's kind of a different animal. Yeah, hey, Mike, uh, you have a question. Yeah, I was um, curious how you reconcile the, the timing differences in the, the water right that's serving as mitigation is, is a distance from the river such that the, the um, impacts from that well are, are annualized and, and steady state, whereas you're going to put something very near the river where the impacts will be um, immediately felt. Um, so essentially your, your benefits from ceasing um, summertime pumping up on the West Plains is not commensurate with initiating summertime withdrawals right near the river. Is there some sort of discount in the mitigation for that? So I, I was Patrick's our hydrogeologist. I was going to let him speak to that, but um, so let's I'll, I'll let him talk. <laughs> yeah, the the short answer is at this point, no, we have not. You know, there's not a discount in the mitigation. There's not a reduction to account for that. Um, the approach that the city took with their initial. Um, hydrogeologic analysis, they, they hired a consultant to do some initial analysis for them, um, really looked at, at travel time. So as we're considering, um, you know, the cessation of pumping at the city's wells, um, looking at those wells in this first, in this application, we're looking at those wells um, where, where the impact to the river has essentially moved through the system. Um, you know, they are currently authorized to withdraw that amount of water, the QI and QA in the West Plains. And as Dan said, we're simply moving that down uh, a little lower in the system. But as far as a discount or a reduction on the mitigation, no, we have not considered that. Um, would you agree the impacts from very near the river are much different than the impacts from a well that's six miles away? Potentially, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't want to say that it will absolutely be the case. We are low in the system. We are um, in uh, a gaining reach of the river here at the bottom, you're right near the bottom of the system. Um, I, that's, that's where we're at. Okay, thanks. Right. 
Uh, yeah, Dan uh, or Patrick, uh, how do you intend to protect that mitigation water in space between airway heights and uh, the new, between the old point of withdrawal and the new point of withdrawal uh, in perpetuity? Well, I mean, we are relinquishing the existing water, right? Um, are you going to close it to entry uh, after that relinquishment so that water's protected? No, but we wouldn't. I mean, it's not officially closed because, you know, we don't have a rule specifically up there. But I, I can't see how you could issue a new water right there without impairing somebody. So, I mean, the only impacts I could see would be from a domestic exempt wells, and they're kind of their own animal at this point. Thanks. Yep. I had a question, this is Doug Greenland, about the priority date. So if the water rights that they'll be relinquishing for mitigation have different priority dates, what's the priority date for the for the mitigated right? So the priority date of the mitigated right will technically be to, um, 2021, June, whenever it was in June, they applied. It wouldn't be the old 70s one, although their mitigation is from, like I said, 50, 60, 70s. It depends on which water right we're talking about. I think there's three, I think, in this batch. Does that make that a junior water right to senior rights? I mean, it depends on, <laughs> it would technically be yes, a junior water right with mitigation that potentially a senior. It's, it's not an easy answer. And that this isn't a, an easy scenario and uh, has some, some potential uh, for precedent setting uh, in this basin and, and beyond. <laughs> These, these questions um, where did they just jump to the line? I know that there's other water rights applications that have been um, filed in, in, in the past and, and likely um, that are, are currently pending. Um, did they just jump to the front of the line or um, oh, oh, okay. since they have mitigation that, that's a, a different category of, of process? So certainly, okay, I see what you're getting at there. Yeah, so <clears throat> under normal circumstances, we're supposed to take them in the order with, with which we receive them. However, there are several categories that are allowed to be priority processed. If in fact you provide um, mitigation, it becomes what they call a water budget neutral uh, project. So no impact to the, source, to the source, right? Those are allowed to be processed uh, ahead of, in the head of the line basically. So that's how we were able to priority process this application. Because I, I am aware, yeah, that there are a number of other applications that are in that basin. In, in your um, ROE process um, and, and report development, um, do you at all consult with the, the State Drinking Water um, Primacy agency DOH um, through this process in, in consideration of uh, this, this municipal, um, right? Or does DOH come in during comment process? So, as part of the report, we tell the entity, which is Airway Heights, that they're required to work with the Department of Health. And coordinate with them. That's that we just tell them as part of the process because we, I get that there's there's always a dis, bit of disconnect because you're talking multiple agencies, right? And we do coordinate to an extent. However, ours is is we rely on the city to coordinate with them to make sure that it meets DOH standards. So for us, we're looking at physical quantity, you know, that can get down there. They look at quality, obviously. Um, so that would really be on their their um, plate. My 
Yeah, I guess I'm circling back a little bit to the question I had before. So I guess it's your guys' opinion that this this mitigation scenario meets the standard that was um, put forth in the foster decision. Because I, I know that that decision kind of turned on not being able to match perfectly the mitigation with the impact of the new um, withdrawal. And, and if I'm recalling right, there was no real evaluation of seasonal impacts from both the mitigation and the um, and the new withdrawal. So, so are, is there is is that included? Is it um, evaluation of the seasonal impacts and how the mitigation lines up with the impacts um, in the the report from um, that was done the hydrogeologic review? Is that seasonal? evaluation in there and if not I guess why why not I was going to let Patrick answer that but I was going to say one thing about foster it's it's the it's a little more complicated than just being direct season to season it has to do with the fact that if water is not available in the off season so the, the foster one was kind of funky because water, I believe, wasn't available in the wintertime. If water is available legally and physically in the wintertime and you use, for, use it for mitigation, as long as, you're, as long as you are mitigating the season that would cause negative impairment, right, or impact to, like, for instance, in this case, it would be the low flow on the Spokane River and existing rights. As long as water is physically available in the other parts of the season, it, it doesn't violate foster. It's when it, it's when it, it's when you take like if you had a summer only water right, and then you move to an impact that was summer and winter both, and the and the basin was closed year round, for instance. Where in this situation, we find water isn't available typically in the summer months, so that would be the season, the mitigation that would be of the most concern. So, and I was going to let Patrick speak to the hydro part. <laughs> well, well, I guess I'm I'm thinking that there's not enough mitigation to offset the use in the summer. There, that's why the evaluating that to make sure there's sufficient mitigation during the summertime. And short answer, Mike, is, is we do believe that there's sufficient mitigation. And you know, that's that's why we have the comment period, right? I mean, that's it's certainly invite comments and certainly invite analysis of, of what we put out there. Uh, so did, was that seasonal analysis of the, imp of the impacts and mitigation, was that part of the, the study that was released with the documents? Um, on, a fair, on a limited basis, yeah. I mean, there was, there was some relatively simple, uh, in some portions, relatively simple hydrogeologic analysis done uh, to look at travel times and estimates. I mean, absence of building a numerical model, um, you know, there are some assumptions that have to be made. And yeah, those are those assumptions are outlined in the report. But but there is a numerical model. So you just put the withdrawal within the SVRP model and run it. Great. I mean, that's it's what we what we have is 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 what's in the report i mean it, we have we have looked at um looked at the impacts as we and we we feel that they're sufficient so this is beryl Fredrickson, and i just want to add a little bit of clarity from the report mike they said that um to mitigate seasonal concerns, especially when river flows are below the minimum required flow rate, um, they were going to rely on city, city of Spokane water as an emergency source. Um, they have a current intertie agreement, but that's about to expire right now um, in like a, a next 2022, 2023 or something like that. That's what's written in the in the document that um, that Patrick is referring to. Oh, so the water right would be conditioned in such a manner. Good question. I don't know that part.
it's not currently conditioned that way. So earlier, uh, at least here in the metal valley, there's uh, some uh, of basin transfer uh, determinations um, that I'm not completely uh, knowledgeable of, but does ecology take into account um, other uh, out of basin transfer um, procedures um, in, in their decision making process here? Well, well, certainly we, even though we're four different regions, we do work together and we discuss issues like that. The Metau, unfortunately over there, there's a variety of different rules and a, it has some really odd geology from my understanding. So there's, there's things that would apply and work there that probably wouldn't work here given our unique geology and situation. So, so much of the time they, they, they laugh and they say the devil's in the details. It really is. It depends really very specific on the area that you're working in and how, how it all interacts together. So, Yes, we do, we do discuss those kinds of things. And yes, we, we try to be, to be consistent, but there's so many factors. It may not look that consistent when you look at it from the outside world, if you don't know all the details, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So this is Beryl again. Um, one of the questions that I had was that I didn't see a, very much discussion on the known contamination at the well source and that ultimately that same water is contributing to the Spokane aquifer. And maybe the assumption is made that the PFAS will eventually drain down to the Spokane aquifer so it doesn't necessarily change the conditions, but I don't know if that's truly the case, geotech or um, chemically, if that's truly the case, but what's being done to address the fact or what I would assume would happen, which is that the contamination would be drawn faster down to the Spokane aquifer if it's not, if the current airway heights wells are being pulled at the new location. So I, I can attempt to address that. Um, there is, there's a lot that we don't know about extensive contamination, um, you know, on the West Plains around Fairchild uh, and including some of the city of Airway Heights as well. Um, the, the Air Force, has, we've been working with the Air Force for the last two to three years um, on their uh, environmental assessment, their initial assessment and cost analysis that they've that they've been working on, uh, and their what they have shared with us is limited as far as 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 extent of contamination goes. Uh, we do know that you know contamination was detected at I believe three of the city's wells, three of the eight uh, of the city's wells. Um, but all indications at this point, we have nothing to indicate that contamination uh, is migrating out of the West Plains area, um, both from the Air Force, the Spokane Regional Health District uh, in 2019 issued an advisory to drillers on the West Plains, um, describing uh, areas of known, in loose terms, areas of known contamination with kind of very broad boundaries, you know, streets, west of this street, east of this street, and so on and so forth. Um, and there has been, there hasn't been any indication that, that there is migration off the West Plains. Uh, as part of this process, uh, the city of Airway Heights would include some fairly rigorous water quality testing um, as they look at feasibility of a new well location. And once a, a potential well is drilled, there would be some fairly rigorous water quality sampling that would go along with that. Um, and that's, that, that's what I know at this point. Yeah, because that, that does make sense that there would be minimal um, traveling of this contamination because the wells aren't drawing um, water right now. So if, if there is movement of the contamination, migration of the contamination, it would be small based on natural flows, not the 2,000 acre foot 
draw that the well water rights hat or the wells would operate at or the water right represents. So, um, but what you're saying is that there's sample wells out there right now. I'm, I'm asking the question, are there sample wells out there now watching the PFOS contamination and what you've been told by Fairchild Air Airway Heights, Fairchild Air Force Base, I'm sorry. I can't speak to, I don't know if they have dedicated monitoring wells at this point. Um, the okay. assumption would be that yes, there are, but I know that they have also, they've been sampling residential wells uh, as part of kind of their ongoing effort. Um, the Air Force has been involved in sampling residential wells um, and installing treatment systems at those residential wells and the testing that goes along with those treatment systems. Okay, thank you. Yep. So if uh, anyone else have uh, further questions? You can get the dance to dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have any um, further questions at this moment. Um, but uh, we we appreciate uh, you uh, sharing this uh, with us and uh, fielding our questions and. We look forward to uh, seeing the uh, ROE. Sounds good. That's all. Uh, any further uh, discussion? Or should we uh, move on? I realize that we. Uh, before I'm gonna slip in uh, uh, something here, I guess it's old business, but just a general reminder, um, Austin from Spokane Valley Fire um, was with us last month. Uh, he asked us maybe the month before uh, about uh, fire hydrant data uh, for their uh, insurance process. Um, just a reminder to, just a reminder to, to everyone that had gotten uh, outreach from, from Austin to get him the, that information as, I mean, would you, uh, if there's information that's not easily collected, would you take partial submittals versus a, a complete, or would you rather have a, the, that full picture? Um. I think trying to be one and done would be almost easier than, oh, I can pick up a piece here, come back at a piece there. Um, I don't have a firm like by this date, I plan on giving them everything. So the, the original end of December date was like, let's just start chipping away at this. Um, their review process is in February. So there's obviously some lead time between December and February, but okay. um, I probably wouldn't want to pick up a partial. Uh, yeah. If it's going to take more time, then great. Like I know that I could get everything at a later date. I think that would be preferred. Okay. Um, the stuff that I have that uh, I have received already, I'll look at just to one familiar, familiarize myself with it, but then um, go through their criteria and be like, yeah, it looks like we're getting everything covered from what's been submitted so far. So. I guess those early submittals will be helpful, okay. but okay. Yeah. So fill out all the blanks. Don't, don't, don't skip any. Don't skip any. I'm, I'm number, I'm number crunching uh, right now too. So, uh, if, working through it. If I could, Jeremy, on one of those. So I sent out um, the higher test results that we've done that might be helpful in like certain counts and certain other uh, metrics. Um, I've got half of those updated and corrected and sent out. So I think basically alphabetically from orchard, irrigation district down to uh, uh, Vera would be the last one. So the second half I haven't got updated yet, but from like Carnhope to 
through the M's, so through Millwood, I think, have all been done. So okay. the second half of those should be updated and sent out next week. So okay. um, I realize I'm probably a, t a pull in that tent as well to get that stuff back to you guys. Well, building is still happening uh, in, in yeah. most of our areas. So. Not enough snow on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Even when there is snow, they keep doing it. Come on. <laughs> Give us a break. Okay, yeah. Uh, so do your best, get that information uh, over to Austin here, um, December 30 or shortly thereafter, uh, so they can submit their uh, information to, what is that outfit called with W? That's Washington Survey and Ratings Bureau. Okay. Yeah. That one. That one, yeah. <laughs> WSRB. Is the WSRB. WSRB. <laughs> Looking at it this morning. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so back onto the agenda. Um, the next item is our uh, 2022 draft budget. Um, we hope to uh, finalize that and uh, pass it today if if everyone is, is so inclined. But um, yeah. Tony Lee, do you want to? I have a. Let me put it up on the screen. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna, so people can look at it. I should um, mention that yesterday, um, the Spokane Regional Toxic Task Force um, had their monthly meeting. Um, and, and Tony Taylor from uh, Spokane County uh, made an, an ask for their 2022 work plan, um, asked the, the Toxic Task Force to uh, fund um, graphic design um, services for the Aquifer Atlas, um, and the Toxic Task Force um, accepted that. Um, so we were initially discussing getting money from multiple different um, organizations um, to fund that uh, $8,000 package. Um, we were able to secure um, that $8,000 from Toxic Task Force. Um, so that being said, we did, we do have uh, 1,500 uh, penciled in as, a, as our share if we weren't able to get that money. Um, I think we just, I propose we just let that ride in, in that fund. Um, that, that, that's the, what I know here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, so let me go back up to the fall committee. Uh, we have in green, the risk assessment advocatory, that's the GSI proposal um, that would be the $24,300 um, that we've been talking about I think since October. Um, I did add a new line item, given that the City of Airway Heights water rights and um, responses to the ecology's ROE, might need some um, attention with um, our consultant guy Gregory. Um, we, you know, here's the money we did pay him so far. I wondered if we wanted to put some amount in there as a placeholder so we didn't have to come back. Like if we needed a a response and the timeline was, you know, it, at a point where we didn't have a meeting, would we want to have some allocated there and you know and have a resolution in January so that we could ask Guy to go ahead and do some of those comments for us? And if so, how much would we want to put in um, in this category for future? Uh, you know, we, we can make those responses quickly and. Um, Does anyone have uh, thoughts on that? Thank you. 
figure that out. What, what's that number? Yeah. I mean, what's, I mean, he charges a buck an hour. <laughs> it's being one hundred twenty-five dollars an hour. Um, I think if we, you know, putting in fifteen hundred to two thousand, that would probably get us through any of the ecology ROE process, and then we could come back and decide if we need to allocate more. But I, I don't. I would like to see if we have the ability to, to react quickly, and I'd like it to be, you know, out there for everybody to read on it, so that's. Not what we did the last time, just trying to make it all work quickly without everyone in agreement or, or knowledgeable about it. Yeah. And let me go back up a little farther. So, even with everything that we have allocated, you know, our budget currently without adding anything for the airway sites. Is $168,555, which is higher than the amount that we'll bring in. But you'll remember that we have a little bit more than $44,000 in the balance of in our Washington Trust account. Um, and so far, we haven't had to tap into our, our county pool. Um, so even adding another $1,500 to $2,000 in there doesn't take us above the amount that we have available um, without tapping into the county pool. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to uh, source water protection money. Um, this is going to turn into a, a non-issue. Exactly. Uh, getting to the, the budget for next year. Um, I don't think there were any other uh, changes. Now, if we felt we needed to reduce the amount of the um, media buy for the Tywick award, um, we could do that if you feel uncomfortable kind of being that much over the top of what we bring in. Um, so far, I've received one nomination for a, a Tywick uh, award. And we do need to get this out so that we actually have a competitive um, you know, opportunity in that people know about it. Um, it is airing on KSPS, but not everybody watches that. So we would need to uh, you know, have some other ways of getting it out into the media. This 10,900 was primarily because we were using a lot of video. That's showing that. I mean, part of what we want to do is honor Ty as well as announce the um, opportunity for that award. So, uh, and we still don't know how much the plaques will actually cost. Uh, so, this is still an estimate. If we had to go back to just doing an ordinary award the first year and not have the, the um, aquifer atlas outline, we could you know, drop that down considerably. It would be, you know, under $100 for. Um, a, a, you know, a, a simple award. We were trying to um, get a, a really distinctive award and have some a number of them printed. So we have room for flexibility in these areas if we feel like we're, um, and, uh, if we're we've gone over budget or, or you're not comfortable with having that much about what we bring in each year. In, in long term, will uh, what's the chance that the Airway Heights would be joining into the Spokane Aquifer Joint Board because then technically they're in the Spokane Aquifer at that point? Would that bring in more revenues? Does that happen? Yeah. Or do they go alone? Or I mean, they they potentially could go go it alone and do their own wildlife protection plan and, and deal with that. Um, in the the last meeting, um, my hand is on No. Um, his name's Kevin. Oh, Kevin Anderson, Kevin Anderson uh, said that he had already been thinking about if, if they are granted the ability to um, pull from the SVRP, that their intent would be to, to participate in SAJB. Um, it would be the path of least resistance for them to um, stand up wellhead protection uh, requirements for DOH on that well. 
yeah, that'd be another source. So do you need a proposal for your life there? Mm -hmm. And this isn't my um, spreadsheet, so I, I should probably go to that so we can actually. Go. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, 2000 seems like a, a decent number to, to slot in there. We have um, some flexibility in these other areas and um, we're gonna make a, a hard uh, pass at that or a hard run at that um, source water protection money. Because um, that would help out greatly. So we added two thousand in here. That's why I just added ten. Yeah, that's seventy three six seventy into over here. We get a budget of one hundred seven thousand five hundred fifty five, with room to be flexible on some items and also. With the source water protection grant in the in the world of possibilities. I'm good with that. I mean, we always have some kind of a issue or, or something that comes up mid year. We have to look at the budget anyways and tweak and adjust. That's really nothing compared to yeah some of the things we have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, any any uh, further to discussion on that? Anyone on the and virtually have any uh, input on this? See a lot of mutes. It's nice to hide behind that. You blanked out <laughs> the camera. Is there anyone there even? <laughs> 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 oh, Rick's there. <laughs> hey, there. You might need a physical, you know, like a thumbs up so we can actually see if we have a vote. No, that's your cut out of Rick for sure. Who is doing the risk assessment for the aggregate court? That, that's the, the GSI proposal that we. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, well, all joking aside, um, do we feel good with the way this is, is laid out? Uh, does anyone want to make a motion? Are we at that point yet? This is Matt from Whitworth. I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, good motion to uh, was that is that motion to accept the, the budget as as uh, presented with this uh, slight adjustment to uh, two thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion on the, the table to um, for the, to accept the budget as presented with that two thousand um, dollar addition. Um, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Rick. Thank you. Um, any further discussion uh, regarding our, our twenty twenty two budget here with uh, one uh, adjustment? Okay. Uh, hearing, hearing none. Um, all those in favor of uh, 
approving our uh, budgetary plan for the calendar year, fiscal year 2022. Um, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Motion carries. We have a budget for 2022. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being here uh, so we can uh, get out. So um, with that, our new business section is, is complete. And uh, Tony Lee, uh, our last item, or last section is the health program implementation plan. All right. Um, so the um, Spokane River Forum has been working on the, uh, the irrigation, um, outdoor irrigation, um, water conservation website. And what you're going to see is a mock-up. It's still all on paper. Um, the images are just um, placeholders. And, but the idea of the name that we've come up with, which I hope you will like, is NERDS for Outdoor Watering. Because uh, that great acronym, well, first of all, Kristen Zimmer says NERDS is a cool word. And Kristen says it, you know, it must be so. <laughs> And then uh, now we can do all kinds of PR around, you know, we need to save water now, you know, going to the nerds for outdoor watering. So this is all about providing the consumer with outdoor watering solutions. And so um, if you see that phrase, um, you know, let the nerds for outdoor watering connect you to leak detection, sprinkler repair, landscape professionals, do-it-yourself resources, how-to videos, Water saving tips, rebates, classes, and, and events in Kootenai and Spokane counties. Um, and then, so on every page, there'll be this sidebar that um, <coughs> shows that they can click on click the, the database that will help them find a professional who can just do it for them, or they can find do it yourself resources, how to videos. So you're going to see throughout this, and I'm going to show you several screens that we've got any number of ways we can get to those how-to videos. If we have watering restrictions, there's a, a place that, that'll be for each of you purveyors to be able to let us know that you set watering restrictions. If not, it will just be a general recommendation of no watering between 10 and 6 p.m. or whatever we decide is the right thing. If there are rebates, coupons, and contests, we can um, show those there for different Purveyors who provide rebates on different things, events, and classes. Um, there'll be a water need calculator. Uh, there'll be a whole section on how why water saving matters, and a media library and a photo gallery. If uh, if you um, so the the big categories, and here's where I need you to tell me what are we whether we're missing something major. What, one of the sections you said you wanted us to look at was outdoor leak detection. So uh, there's a whole piece on that. Um, there's a whole section on landscape design, sprinkler repair, and retrofit. And then you're going to see the how-to videos and water saving tips that are on each of those pages. And stop me if you have questions. So if you go to outdoor leak detection, what you're going to see is a section on how to read their water meter and identify if they've got a problem. Uh, then looking at how do you detect underground sprinkler system leaks? There's a lot of videos out there that can help us um, with this. And then again, as I showed you before, the videos and water saving tips. Um, is there anything we're missing in outdoor leak detection that you think would be really important? I guess it maybe it's hard when you haven't seen everything that we've got. So let me show you everything and then we'll come back. Outdoor leak, if we uh, under uh, plant professional have links to people that do that. Thing. Yes, absolutely. In fact, we've already begun to create that database. Um, and so that's a whole piece that I'm not showing you today, but it'll be, you know, they'll, they'll just be there. All the, in the, across the region for Idaho and Washington. If uh, you go to sprinkler repair and retrofit, we have six areas that we've identified, and you can, again, let us know if we've missed something. There'll be a section, if you click on this, 
We haven't gone the next level down in this yet. We're just making sure we got the upper levels correct. So there'll be a whole section on repair and retrofit. And if there's another word we can use that's more popular than retrofit, let us know. Um, because um, that may not be the word that people will be looking for. Um, then all about smart controllers and, and the role that they play, rain and soil sensors, drip irrigation and soaker hoses, backflow testing, and why it's important will be in this section. And again, videos and water seeding tips that relate to sprinkler repair and retrofit. Um, moving on, if you click on landscape design, um, in this section, uh, you're going to see all of these things, and I'll just go to the next screen that shows them as, so you can click on landscape design and it'll, it'll give you a lot of samples. Uh, you can click on Spokanescape and it'll go take you right to the Spokanescape so that you could, um, you know, if you were eligible, you know, learn all about that or the Wisecape book, which is for the Palouse area. Uh, this tab would take you to uh, drought tolerant and uh, native plants through Master Gardeners of U of I and WSU. This section we know we wanted, we haven't gotten very far yet, but it's going to be about water quality, fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides, and how they could you know, in runoff if we don't have sprinklers. So we're going to kind of tie it back to those sprinklers and why we, why using smaller amounts and, and the fact that native plants won't need as much. And so there's a whole piece that needs to be thought about with that one. And again, the water saving uh, videos and tips. Uh, then in the how-to videos, if you click just, if you go straight there, It'll lead you back through leak protection videos and tips, sprinkler repair and retrofit, uh, and landscape. And if you uh, click on like leak protection, what we're going to do is have these little clips. You'll see the question. If you click on that, how do I find an outdoor water leak? It'll take you to videos. Um, and so we're collecting a number of questions that we'll be using that would be you know, what people are looking for, and then they'll take them directly to the, the video. Or the blue ones, well, these colors may change, but I just distinguish between, these are just the tips, you know, why does my water bill increase, you know, and then a tip to check your water meter and, and so forth. These are just samples of how it's going to look, and, but, and, and so it'll have that. The question will be what you see, and then if you click on that question, you'll see the either the, uh, tip or the video. Uh, same thing with sprinkler repair and retrofit. Um, same kind of scenario. Um, and so what we're collecting on are the videos that, and then the kinds of questions we think people will ask um, around sprinkler system. And then finally, the landscape design, you know, why might I want to replace lawn with native plants? And this particular video came from Wisecape. They had all their residents that are doing Wisecape, you know, talk about the benefits of um, not having lawn to mow and all the things. So, you know, that's one of many videos that will be in there, including um, uh, things that are already on the spoken script as well. Um, and then just tips like, how can I reduce the weeds in my yard? Well, mulch, um, and then, so we may have mulching videos and so forth. So that's kind of where it's at right now. So do you have any comments for us in outdoor leak detection, landscape design, sprinkler repair and retrofit, or those how-to videos? Every page, uh, they'll be able to go directly back to this navigation sidebar and that media library will be a place where, as we uh, we talked about, about, about they're looking at um, Coeur d'Alene 2030, um, doing some videos for these, particularly for landscape design and native uh, drought tolerant plants. And so we can put their videos in there. We've got videos from Barney May uh, that can go into this media library that then anybody can use because it will be Creative Commons and we'll just be collecting um, that and photos so people can come um, to find ideas and pictures of beautiful lawns and 
um, you know, so that's, and there may be things we we've not thought of there. So, and this flying water saving matters, uh, it's going to be a big piece of it, but we're going to, you know, that will tie back to all of this and, and protecting the aquifer and, and the river. And so that's kind of where we're at with that. Any comments, questions, thoughts, wonderings? So where's this website going to be? Is it through with the river forum or is it going to be its own site? Oh, well, it'll be it's the Spokane River Forum, but as they've done with Enviro Certified and with the Waste Directory, it'll have its own URL that'll be Nerds for Outdoor Watering. Or if you tell us you hate that, we'll figure out something else. But we've been through many, many different ideas, and we love this acronym. So, um, and um, you know, as Kristen said, nerds is popular. I went out looking, and oh my gosh, there's a million things out there of nerds. <laughs> Fishing and nerds for yeah, so it does seem to be a very popular um, piece. Yeah, it is, and it's real annoying for the original nerds. It's just <laughs> like, oh, now it's cool to be a nerd. Whatever, rude. Nerds out for watering for dummies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not to make anyone feel bad. Besides, we're the nerds they come to. You know, behind the dumpsters, so it's not dumb. Okay. I can't stop seeing leaks. <laughs> or I hear irrigation systems running in my sleep sometimes. <laughs> it's a curse almost. <laughs> well, and my next door neighbors have some really bad practices. Yeah. 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 I probably hear that. <laughs> um, so the watering in the middle of the day. Yeah. That's Thank you. That's right. <laughs> um, and we can put a link on the SAPP site. We'll put one on the IWAC site. Each and every one of you can put a link on your site. So if, if they come to your site, they can easily go and find this. Um, we're trying to make it as much of a community resource as possible because a lot of different community members have helped fund it. So it really is the way Spokane of the Forum operates. They collect little bits from you know all of this is about a forty to fifty thousand dollar project. So far, we've contributed five thousand to it. Um, and um, and uh, and is going out for an Nullia grant in January to try and help fund some of the rest of the work because there'll be a lot of work. It'll probably take us all year to really get it up and running uh, the yeah. way we want it to. So. And we'll stay in paper copies for a while until we know we've got it right before we start bringing in um, our graphic designer and our web designer because that then that starts getting costly. We have to make changes after. So this is the time to really, you know, have, think about it. Let us know. You know, we've got months now before we'll, you know, turn it over to Anne Francis and have her start designing this. Um, although we're going to have her start the the database on the professionals and the and and do it yourself resources that database can be building while we're working on how the rest of this website is going to lay out. But we think we're pretty clear about how we want it to look and operate now. It's just a matter of um, now doing the next layer down. If you guys approve that, you know, you think we're in the right direction, we'll start drilling down. The, you know, if you click on um, any in a lot of those other pages, then what do you see next? So that's kind of where we're at in this process. Any uh, comments? I, I like the general buckets, if you if yeah. you will. Uh, um, I think that that certainly has some a lot of value because uh, we we get a lot of questions about certainly the landscape design part of it and. I tell them I'm not a plant guy. <laughs> well, Another nerd for that. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, we're trying to really tap into and, and uh, acknowledge all the resources like Spokane State, Black Wise State, making sure that we're not reinventing what people are already doing, but really just being a conduit to get um, the general public to this website and get them the information they want as quickly as possible. Consistent so. messaging. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to go along with our water use efficiency plans with stuff like this. Yeah. Right. 
And you can put this in your water use efficiency plan that this is part of what you're helping to fund. Um, so, and uh, part of the funds from next year, money will go towards this as well. I'll be thinking that $10,000 you just approved in the Spokane River Forum, there'll be about 5,000 of that that will go towards this continuing development of while we'll continue to work on bio certified and the waste directory for the rest of those funds. So if um, this, uh, just a reminder that uh, about Enviro Certified, I met with the health district. Uh, of course, we were just about ready to really get going again, and then we found that we had yet another variant in, uh, in the coronavirus world. So well, we're still going to move out and work with um, renewing at least 20% of our existing Enviro Certified businesses. We're going to get an intern that will be focusing on food waste recovery. We've been de designing those materials and um, those should be ready for you to look at next month. Um, and as that program really uh, moves out, but, you know, focusing on the fat soils and greases that clog up pipes and the stormwater issue uh, where bins aren't covered. Uh, those things. And that is it for me. See you January 27th, 2022. <laughs> we can believe that. Well, um, already. I have a really dumb question, but is the bins, are those like, like dumpsters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside. And part of the issue we found out with those dumpsters is that the lids are so heavy that the employees have a hard time opening and closing them. So they leave them open. Then we've also, you know, talking about health district, one of the other issues is that the homeless are going in and just throwing everything out of the dumpsters around restaurants looking for food. And so that all that stuff just ends up being out there. So they're looking at how do we maybe do a side entrance, lock the top of the dumpsters, you know, because they don't have a solution yet. But they're looking at different options for how to deal with the uh, problems around dumpsters because you know, then those leak and then all that you know goes out into the storm drains that are usually close by and it's not usually with an oil water separator so it's an issue there's many of those that i watch in downtown portland parked right next to a storm drain mm -hmm. that goes right into the lake Mm -hmm. Makes you feel warm and fuzzy oh, inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, depending on the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it's snowing for real. <laughs> yeah, the downstairs are not. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate everyone's uh, time and effort here. Um, and I hope uh, everyone has a great holiday. And uh, drive safe and have some fun in the snow. If you hate snow, learn to love it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I guess with that, uh, you want to hang on. We're gonna end it. Oh, Doug. So one thing Sorry. from the city of Spokane, if you've been paying attention, there has been a posting for a director of water and hydroelectric services. So if uh, you were looking for big time promotion, there is that position is posted on the city's website. Thanks. And this is Brenda with the Department of Health. Can I mention something? Sure. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I just wanted to let you know that um, the regional engineer for Spoken County in our office, Sherry Miller, She's accepted a new position in our headquarters office as the operations manager. So currently our Spokane County regional engineer position is vacant, but we expect to fill that soon. If you do currently have a draft plan in, it may be delayed a bit, um, but as soon as we get a new regional engineer on, um, we'll have them come to the meeting and introduce themselves. Thank you.
Have a good one, everyone. Happy holidays. Uh, you too, Dan. Well, now that I see that Scott's coming to.